Hi, in this particular video, we will talk about how to basically set up a deep learning toolkit environment for dev purpose in, in Splunk. And probably later we'll talk about the prod setup as well. But initially we will start with how to set up the dev environment. Then we will try to understand this particular app and what are the different feature it is having. And then probably slowly we will talk about some of the other advanced stuff as well. Now DLTK or the deep learning toolkit is basically the extension you can say about, uh, from that machine learning toolkit or MLTK apps Plunk has, right? So the main, main thing is that like you can run your models in, in, in a Docker container, basically Docker or any other container over there, which deep learning toolkit supports. And it has it has supports for like TensorFlow, PyTorch, or any kind of NLP frameworks, which we will we will see it as well. And you also have the container, which can which basically you can deploy your models and containers for like GPU and CPU support as well over there. So there are a lot of advantages of deep learning over the machine learning uh, toolkit here. Now architecture wise if you see it like you will be running your model in a container as i said like whether it's a dev environment or or prod environment and basically your your search so the data source is not getting changed here right you, you will be still having your splunk searches which will have your initial data right feed it to the model for for the prediction purpose or or let's say classification purpose as well then you can basically visualize them and then take actions you can basically create alerts from them and as well as you can do some kind of automation over there as well now in terms of settings or in terms of setups it's very easy the first thing two things you need is the splunk machine learning toolkit app and as i have discussed before in my machine learning toolkit app uh, installation so it requires that python package as well over there right scientific toolkit so both of those apps you need to install first and then restart splunk then you need to basically come over here in this in this Splunk base app deep learning toolkit for Splunk you can download it from here for free and then just like we do for other apps installation right from apps if I just go to manage apps install app from file so you can you can do that so it basically creates this folder if I just see it from the back end it's basically creates this MLTK dash container app okay so so it's it's a normal splunk based app and if i just show you now so when i already set it up in my environment so probably what i'll do is i will just go through what i have done it over here because it requires certain kind of settings uh, to make it work properly so the first thing you need so whenever if you are not configured your deep learning app and the first page you will see it this page here okay so it will show you this page and it will show you first like what are the dependent app it needs like the machine learning toolkit and the scientific computing tool now once you basically accept this one so it will ask for either the docker or the kubernetes environment details here okay and it has a direct integration of the to the observability solution as well but for today's session what what i will do is we will just concentrate on the docker first then probably i will create separate stuff for kubernetes as well so as we will be integrating docker over here so first thing you need is to install docker and make it up and running now i think i already created a video probably i will give that video link somewhere over here so you can you can watch it how to install docker in a windows environment so currently i am working in a windows environment probably like in future we will talk about how to do the same stuff in a in a nix environment as well okay so you need to install docker 
and you need to make the docker up and running and if i just show you over here so this is my docker right and if i just show you my docker dashboard so this is what it is currently having it over here okay so we'll come back to this these things very soon okay so this is my docker up and running and i think while installing docker in windows you need to configure a linux environment as well so which it, it, it will automatically guide you regarding that one okay so once you have the docker installed properly so you need to come over here to this screen and give the details over here like if you see it like if you are first time configuring it so they have given an example over here okay so for different different environment you can write you can basically give those settings in this way so i have basically given the similar stuff there is no complex stuff over here so my docker is also running on this port on uh, in my local host so i have given the similar stuff whatever they have it over here for the windows okay so endpoint url and the external url it is for windows over here these two things are optional for logging purpose now the certificate currently for the dev environment as we are talking about a dev setting so we will not talk about um, the ssl certificate now so that's why it will be we will go ahead with the disabling that one but in prod settings definitely we have to enable it and you should it is always recommended that you should be using your own ssl certificate here okay so once you have given this information you need to click on test and save now if everything fine it will give you a success message over here but if everything is not fine it will give you a proper error then you have to fix it over here so i think if you have installed docker properly and if you give these settings properly there should be should not be any issue over here okay by this one uh, that that setting up docker over here with with the splunk dl ticket now another important thing we need to remember over here when you will be setting up your docker for the dev environment specifically is if i just go to my docker settings my docker settings if you see this one like expose daemon on tcp localhost 2375 you need to check it uh, and this is only for the dev environment because security wise this is not good but for dev purpose you need to check this one so that so that splunk will be able to connect to that this particular daemon over there okay at, at port this one over here so this thing you need to check it from your docker settings as well now once you have integrated docker here so what you need to do now you need to basically make a container up and running so for that what you need to do is you need to come over here to this screen container screen so when i was doing this one in my in my local so i faced most of the issues over here okay so if you see let let it load now if you see it over here like currently i have a one i have one container running over here correct now initially when there will be no container running for you so you need to select basically from here this container images right so let's go to back end and first see it now we have configured docker right so if i just go to this app local folder so there is a file called docker.conf right so if i just open it if i just open it here so all the configurations you have given for your docker will be saved over here that's the first thing now when we come to this container page so we have a lot of details to choose from here right so that details are saved in images.conf these are the pre defined docker images comes with the splunk dltk over here okay sorry it will not be in the local folder the default one should be in the default folder over here so if i just go to images.conf okay so these are the things you are seeing it in that drop down golden image gpu and all and if you see these are the corresponding docker images it is having it over here right so these images are actually present in the docker hub and so the idea is basically like whatever you will be choosing it over here this container 
so behind the scene when you will be starting your container right so ideally it should be pulling that docker image from the docker hub and basically a container will be coming to life from that particular docker image whatever you will be selecting from this drop down over here and the corresponding images you can you can see it over here okay now now one thing is like the the things i have faced it over here is while starting it first of all it was not starting there are a lot of issues over here something like this one i think i had a i had taken a screenshot over here as well so something like list index out of range many times you will be getting this particular error so i think the main fix is you need to click on start again and see whether it is fixing or not properly okay and another thing you could do it over here is these images you can you are seeing it over here right this this docker images so using that docker pool you can pull those images in your local in your local over here as well something like if i just go to command prompt okay and if i just show you the docker images i have so this this two things actually i did by manually pulling this one here okay but this one when i was basically this one created by the con container when i was make it making it up, up and running over here so ideally it should pull and make it live otherwise if it is not maybe you can try with manually pulling that one and see whether it is resolving that issue or not but most of the times you will be getting this error list index out of range the main fix is to you need to you need to click on start again and see whether it is automatically fixing or not i i got another error over here like the port is not available because like when i was receiving this error here so out of curiosity i was i started looking into the code like what was happening be behind the scene right so if you just go to edit mode so this is your start button right so so this is your if i just see this is my start button so it has an id and there is this this the code is very simple over here like it has a single script called containers.js right so this is this is what it is containers.js i have opened this one and if you see like they are doing the same stuff like they are taking this start button and on the start button click they are doing something over here they basically posting it to a endpoint url right so that means there should be a custom endpoint defined in this particular app so it was very easy if i just go to my restmap.conf in that particular app and this is the actually the endpoint they were they were talking about right so, and the script is basically start underscore handler so that that script actually I, I started looking into it and if you see like the cluster so here also if i just cancel it we need to choose that cluster target over here right so this is the code actually they are doing it for like making that particular container up and running so they're, they're basically attaching these volumes as well over here those stuff right so sometimes what is happening over here is the list index out of range errors was happening i think somewhere over here because it was this 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 guy it was not getting populated because maybe it's a it's a huge image or there is some lagging or or some syncing issue over here which is causing this one that's why it is good that you start click on start again okay and then it ideally it should resolve after few after few iterations i think okay so the another error i was talking about is this this port error because once it starts right it starts a lot of stuff like so if i just go to containers again so it basically comes up with a integration with the jupyter lab tensor board spark ui and ml flow as well so this thing also it starts and if you see like wh whenever it starts properly first thing is you can see like how, how many active models you have and the way to know that this model is this particular container is up and running or not you will see this api url you will see this jupyter url everything so you can direct you can directly work in your jupyter lab and and work on this part over here which we will see it uh, in in future videos okay but this is how 
it will be like once your model container is up and running so basically you will be running your models in a container wise so currently we are basically using a cpu based container so you can you can also create like gpu based container as well this stuff okay so once you do that one then probably just to know like whether this this particular stuff is working or not you can go to this classifier and let's say neural network classifier example okay and and if you just submit it over here so it it's it's basically do, using that particular container for for some prediction purpose it just have some diabetes data and based on that it is trying to classify it whether it is diabetic or not okay so if this panel is get giving you data that means at least your dltk environment is up and running here okay so there are other ways as well once this dashboard is loading in between we can see that one if you go to operations here right and okay the dashboard is up and running now okay you can you can see it over here like lot of data is coming up over here which we will analyze very detail in future video that's why i'm not going deeper into it i'm just having a sanity check where this thing this thing is working here okay now as i was telling you in the up from the operations if you go to dltk operation okay so this is a very nice dashboard which will show you like how many container images you have and how many running containers you have those details here also example of like there is a content example or like how many example you have how many community answers you have those things over here okay and if you see it over here currently it is showing like there is a single container running now in our system over here right even the same stuff you can see it by running this this docker ps command as well right so it will basically show you like the what container is running and and other details over here like when is created what is the current status everything it will show you over here so at least what the idea we got it over here is how to configure or how to set up the deep learning toolkit dev environment first okay and we also saw like the main prerequisite is to have that mltk app set up and if you are using docker environment so docker setup or if you are using kubernetes that also you can do it which we will cover in the in the latter videos after that once you have successfully integrated the docker or kubernetes environment what you need to do is you need to come over here and create a container for because your models will be running over there as well and while creating the container you have certain options like what type of container you want to create like whether it's a cpu based or gpu based even there is a provision of creating your own container as well probably we will cover that one too in the future videos okay so but we just just for sanity check purpose we we created a container from the default one coming up with the splunk dltk app and then we try to just create access a dashboard and see like whether the model was able to work or not we are able to work with that particular model or not okay so deployed model or not so now with this idea probably next video we will deep dive into some more fun stuff over there okay see you in the next video